you know, AI is the hot thing, as, uh, as you probably know. And um, it's uh, one of the interesting aspects of that uh, is that uh, whereas, I guess, in the past, in the last 20 years, most AI research uh, was done, or a lot of AI research was done at universities, uh, PhDs in, um, in, um, uh, in, you know, AI, you specialize in AI, you got PhDs and then could specialize in it. Uh, most of them, 80% of them, would go into academia. Um, that has flipped completely. So as of 2020, 70% of all AI PhDs went into uh, the private sector. Uh, the, uh, the private sector now is, is by far dominating universities in terms of cutting edge research into AI, into investment into AI. Um, whether it's Google, now Microsoft, and, and pretty much everybody else uh, in, um, in, uh, in tech is investing heavily. Venture capital is investing heavily. It's the one area in venture capital right now that, is, uh, that you could raise a lot of money with. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, this, this technology is going to be embedded into uh, software, so what's called generative AI, which is like the ChatGPT, is going to be embedded in Microsoft Office, in Google Docs, in Gmail, and in pretty much everything, I think, ultimately. In Siri, in Alexa, in everything, we'll have, ultimately, this uh, ChatGPT-like uh, features. Every single one of the major tech companies has its own version. Um, it's not clear who, you know, we know of the uh, ChatGPT, which is owned now by Microsoft or, or, uh, and is embedded in Microsoft Search, but... Uh, Google is going to come out with their own, and, and, and a Google product might even be better than the ChatGPT4, which is everybody is saying is absolutely amazing, much better than even the version we were people were making fun of a month ago. Um, the progress in this area is stunning. It's accelerating. Of course, there's already calls that uh, this is uh, being monopolized by big tech, and a handful of corporations not control this resource, and this is the most important resource in the world, and we need to break up big tech as a consequence. Um, you're going to hear a lot more of that, a lot more of that, and of course, big tech is hated right now. So there's a lot of energy around trying to break up big tech, uh, and, and part of that energy is going to come from a concern about, uh, about AI and the dominance with AI, and all the research money they're spending on AI, but of course, this is what really advances the world when private industry starts heavily invested in these kind of things, heavily invested, heavily investing in a technology, that's when you get the real breakthrough. And that's where you get the real progress and the real application for human life. Right. Noah's asking how he asked uh, a super chat question or something. You can answer him there. But uh, you can do it uh, at the bottom. There should be a little dollar sign where you can press on that. And then it'll, it, you can follow through and, and, and set up an account and, and do it. it. It's pretty easy and pretty quick. I think a lot of people in the chat right now have done that in the past. So it's pretty easy to do. All right. So, yeah, keep watching the AI space. Keep watching the politics of it. And, and um, uh, you know, one of the things to pay attention to is, I think, given the amount of research dollars and given the amount of research brain power that is going into AI right now, in, in big tech companies uh, look, look for some significant major advances in the technology in the months, uh, in the months and years to come. And, and when you start really extrapolating theoretically on what this could mean, it's pretty astounding. And, and what scares me is that we do not have a political class. We don't have a, a, a population, but certainly not a political class and a population that are anywhere near being able to understand this and be able to conceptualize what it means and be able to deal with this. And, and it's much more likely that we'll get panic. It's much more likely that we'll get hysteria and demonization uh, than we will a rational response to a new technology that could change the world for the better. So um, it's going to be really interesting because, again, it's not just politicians. We get the politicians we deserve. It's the public, I don't think, has a clue what AI is, what it can do, what it can't do, uh, what is possible, um, the jobs that it will indeed replace, the jobs that it won't replace, 
uh, the educational, a whole, our whole educational system is going to have to restructure uh, given advancements in AI. Uh, many of the jobs that we have are going to have to be restructured given the advancements uh, in AI. But given that the educational system is uh, government run, basically, uh, how is that going to happen? What's going to drive that restructuring? What's going to orient people towards the kind of jobs that, that, uh, that will exist in an AI world versus the jobs that clearly won't exist in an AI world? Uh, what's going to orient people towards the right kind of employment, the right kind of jobs, the right kind of education? There is nothing, and people are not going to discover it by, by themselves. So this is, you know, this is a time where we need real thought real focus on uh, orienting the world around us to really a, a, a new technology that, again, has the potential to completely change the world in dramatic ways and relatively quickly. And yet, there is no energy behind that, there's no excitement behind that, there's no thinking behind that, except the startups who are trying to apply this as quickly as possible, but the consequence, in a sense, be damned, which is exactly what they should be doing. But we don't have a leadership, intellectual or political, that is thinking through these things and providing answers to the real questions that should be arising uh, as a consequence of, um, of the rise of... of uh, AI and, and its potential into the future. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.